All right, welcome to another value st value story um, tonight. Um, again, this is just the kind of history is that these are stories, books um, of uh, historical figures and um, of specific value that that historical figure embodied in their lifetime. Um, we're reading these books really to just document the document them. I mean, these are really cool books that I uh, had when I was a kid and, you know, books can last for a long time and putting them on the internet is a fun thing to just kind of keep the collection and, um, and a good way to, you know, pass that down from generation to generation. So um, tonight is another, of course, another good one. This is the value of believing in yourself the story of Louis Pasteur. And again, I'm not a professional storyteller, so hopefully that I'm saying his name right, and hopefully I don't mess things up along the way, but we're just going to go dive right into this because it's 9 o'clock and it's bedtime for my boys. Boys, are we ready? Yes. Okay. I think it might be Louis because it was French. He's French. So I'm going to go with Louie. I'm going to go with Louie. I'm going to go with Louie. Oh, hey, look at this. Um, your Aunt Lori says, hey, hey, guys. So it sounds like Aunt Lori is uh, tuned into this one. Can we give up? Can we, you guys from your beds say, hi, Aunt Lori. Hi, Cousin Quentin. They said hello. All right, so this book is actually, this is interesting when you look at the publishing and the copyright. This one says it was copyright 1976, but there was a first edition published in 1975. So it's very interesting. Um, so this is clearly a, a, second, um, a second production of this one. So, um, Sounds like Aunt Lori says hello to you guys. So that's another really cool thing about this is that, um, you know, I have a, a sister and a nephew and they get to tune into this and, or, you know, uh, check these out another time. Um, that's a part of the really cool thing about this is that it can be shared. Um, these are all books that me and my sisters grew up with. Um, so good times. So we're ready to start. Nolan, yeah. what are you doing? Well, okay. All right, are we ready, guys? No. What happened? Oh, okay. Go turn on your fan. No, I don't know. Okay, I'll be right back. I got to turn a fan on, apparently. Everything is getting in the way of bedtime tonight. Everything is getting in the way. L-O-U-I-S. Well, I'm going to go with Louis because he's French. Okay. Because the S could be silent. That's right. It could be silent. All right. So here we go. Trying this again. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Trying it again. Here we go. A good four minute lead in. Once upon a time in far off France, there lived a man named Louis Pasteur. Now and then, this man, who was a doctor of science, would put on his tall black hat and his bright orange coat and walk in the park. I believe I can, I believe I can, he would say to himself as he went along. What do you think it was that Louis Pasteur believed he could do? It was something important, so important that Louis Pasteur didn't even notice the other people in the park. I must find the invisible enemy, said he. I must find the rabies germs that hide inside people and make them sick, so sick that they die. Once I find that invisible enemy, I'll think of a way to kill it. 
then sick people will be well again. Louis Pasteur sat on a bench and thought about that invisible enemy. I just know I can do it, he said. What a silly man, said some children who happened to be near. If an enemy is invisible, that means no one can see it. If no one can see it, no one can find it. Louis Pasteur pretended that he didn't hear those nosy children. He hurried to his laboratory on Ulm Street in Paris, where he worked every day. Some of the children followed him. So did some grown-ups who wanted to know what he was doing. They peeped through the laboratory window. You'll never do it, they shouted. No one can find an invisible enemy. Louis Pasteur didn't care what the children thought. He didn't care what the grown-ups thought either. He believed in himself. I know I'm right, he said. I'm sure I can do it. So, because he believed in himself, he kept on working. He kept on doing what he thought was right. It was hard work, but Louis Pasteur was very happy. He knew that if he did find the invisible enemy, the rabies germs, he could help many sick people to be well again. While the mean children laughed and poked fun at Louis Pasteur, who was working in his laboratory in France, a little boy was laughing and poking a stick at a poor, sick dog in another land far away, a land called Germany. The boy's name was Joey. He wasn't, a, he wasn't really a cruel little boy. He was just thoughtless, as children sometimes are. And he liked to tease, as children sometimes do. Soon, Joey could see that the dog was very mad. He even had white foam around his mouth, foam like whipped cream. He tried to bark as if to say, stop it, stop it, but he couldn't bark. Something was wrong. Do you know what was wrong? Suppose you could look inside that dog with a great magnifying glass or a microscope. What would you see? That's right. You'd see the invisible enemy, the rabies germs that were making the dog so sick. The dog was so sick and so mad that he would bite at anything, even at the rocks or the trees. If he could, he would surely bite the boy who poked a stick at him. Go to sleep, Lucas. Okay, I'll go. I'll try to be louder, okay? When Joey went off, he didn't notice one very important thing. Can you see what that thing was? Yes, it was the gate. The gate in the fence had come open. The mad, sick dog could get out. He could run after Joey and bite him. That's exactly what the dog did. Ouch, ouch, cried Joey as the mad, sick dog bit him on the arms and the legs. And then it happened. The invisible enemy, the rabies germs that were hiding in the dog, traveled from the dog's foaming mouth into the little boy. Help, help, Joey shouted. Daddy, please help me. Joey's father heard, and he ran out of his cottage to see what was the matter. When he saw the dog biting his little boy, he was terribly afraid. Yes, he was a big, strong man, but he was afraid. Sometimes even daddies are afraid. But Joey's father was brave. He ran toward the dog. Get away! Get away! He shouted at the dog. He waved his arms and stamped his feet. The dog ran off. Joey's father chased the dog back through the gate. When the dog was safely behind the fence, Joey's father carefully closed the gate, but the damage had already been done. The little boy was lying on the ground, crying and bleeding. 
he had been bitten 14 times. I am afraid my boy is going to be very sick, said Joey's father to himself. His father picked Joey up. Did you tease that dog? He asked. Yes, Daddy, and I'm sorry, whispered Joey. He was badly hurt, and he felt very tired. I'll take you home, said his father sadly. He was sad because he knew the terrible thing that had happened to his son. The little boy now had the invisible enemy, the rabies germs, hiding inside of him. Soon, he was not only hurt and tired, he was sick. At... Okay. Everyone who knew Joey was sad. Everyone knew that if a person was bitten by a sick, mad dog, that person would surely die. Before long, the sick dog died. It was very quiet in Joey's home. His parents did not know how to help Joey. They could only wait. Then, one day, there was news. Joey's mother saw it first, and she shouted for joy. Wonderful! Wonderful! she cried. How could she think anything was wonderful when her little boy was dying? What do you think she had read in the newspaper? A doctor of science has found a way to save people like Joey, she said. He says sick people like Joey have been invaded by an invisible enemy. He has found the enemy, and he has also found a way to kill it. Do you know who that man was? Of course, it was Louis Pasteur, the man who believed in himself. He had known he was right, and he had done what he set out to do. Father, we'll need a carriage, said Joey's mother. We must take Joey to Paris to see Dr. Louis Pasteur. Perhaps he can save Joey's life. Joey's father ran. He hired a fine carriage and a stout and able coachman. Six fast white horses were hitched to the carriage. Joey's parents wrapped Joey up in a warm, soft, I'm sorry. Joey's parents wrapped Joey up in warm, soft blankets and put him into the carriage. I wish the dog hadn't died, said Joey sadly. At least I wish I hadn't poked that dog with a stick. Let's go, shouted the coachman. We haven't a second to lose. Hurry, said Joey's mother as the horses galloped down the long road to Paris. Hurry, pleaded Joey's father. Even the trees behind, beside the road seemed to whisper, Hurry, hurry, faster, faster. They were tired and dusty when they arrived at Louis Pasteur's door, but they were happy to be there. They knocked, and Louis Pasteur opened the door and welcomed them. An imaginary friend yet. Dr. Pasteur, said the mother as she smiled a brave smile, we have come a long way to see you. Our little boy was bitten by a mad dog, and he's very sick. Can you help us? Perhaps, said Louis Pasteur. I have found a way to kill the invisible enemy. Enemy those rabies germs that hide inside of sick animals. Perhaps I can kill the ones that are hidden in your little boy. I have invented a vaccine, explained Louis Pasteur. In my vaccine are magical soldiers with bright eyes that can see in the dark. When they see the invisible enemy inside of Joey, my magical soldiers, who are very strong, will kill that enemy. Joey had been put into bed. When he heard Louis Pasteur say this, he rose up a little. Dr. Pasteur, he said, do you mean your magical soldiers will be inside of me? Yes, said Louis Pasteur. Joey looked puzzled, but how will they, will they get there? Very easily, said Louis Pasteur, my magical soldiers can march through long needles 
and into little boys. They marched together like a mighty army. But needles hurt, said Joey. Sometimes, admitted Dr. Pasteur. But can you be brave, Joey, while my magical soldiers march into you? I'll be very brave, promised Joey. Then you will be the very first person to have a shot of my rabies vaccine, said Louis Pasteur. This worried Joey's father. The very first person, he wondered. Will it be dangerous? Are you sure your vaccine will work on a little boy? I believe it will, said Louis Pasteur. And he gave Joey his shot. The magical soldiers marched into the little boy. When they got inside Joey, they found that it was dark. The magical soldiers peered here and there with their magical eyes. At last, they spotted the enemy, those rabies germs that had always been invisible until now. At first, they saw only 12. Can you see them too? They knew that there were really millions of germs inside Joey. You'll never beat us, said the terrible germs. Yes, we will, cried the magical soldiers. The battle began. The magical soldiers attacked the invisible enemy and fought bravely. It wasn't very comfortable for Joey. Would you be comfortable if you had an army of magical soldiers fighting a war inside you? But as the soldiers in the rabies vaccine killed more and more of the enemy, Joey felt better and better. When the last of the enemy had been beaten, Joey felt well. So well that he jumped out of bed and danced around in a circle with his mother, his father, and of course with Dr. Louis Pasteur, who felt as much like dancing as any of them. Hooray, hooray, they all shouted. Then Joey thanked Louis Pasteur and rode back home to Germany in the carriage with his mother and father. In Joey's village, the people lined the streets. They laughed and waved to Joey. Everyone was so happy that he was alive. Even the yellow sun in the sky seemed happy. Above the rooftops, the village bells rang out a joyful tune. They seemed to be singing, safe, safe. Now everyone is safe. No one has to die of rabies. Meanwhile, back in France, where he lived and worked, many people now wanted to talk to Dr. Pasteur. Dr. Pasteur, said some of the children, we think you are wonderful. You found the cure for rabies. Yes, I did, smiled Dr. Pasteur, and I am very happy. But do you know what made me feel so good while I was trying to find the cure? When I was working in my laboratory, Dr. Pasteur said, I enjoyed the times when I believed in myself. In those days, I didn't always succeed. But even if I didn't, it always felt good to believe that I could. As you can see, our story ends happily. And now perhaps you might like to think about yourself. Of course, what you may decide to do in your own life may be very different indeed. But whatever you choose for yourself, let's hope it will make you happier. Just like our good friend, Louis Pasteur. A very interesting nugget on this is that this is from... What I can tell, the first book that didn't feature a imag little imaginary friend of the person in the story. I don't know if that's because this book was maybe one of the very first ones done. And maybe that theme 
um, with the imaginary friends. Um, you know, we had Larry at the when the in the Will Rogers story um, last night. Um, maybe the um, the the imaginary friend um, came um, later in the series. Um, it did have the smiling sun and it did have the germs and it did have the, um, the magical soldier soldiers, but, um, not a, not an imaginary friend, nor did this book, um, go into some of the childhood and, and, uh, didn't go as extensively into some of the other things that, um, or topics that some of the other books, um, uh, went into, so a little, little strange, um, a really good book, good story um, about uh, one of the things that Louis Pasteur did, but very interesting that this is this story. They kind of left, left out a, uh, the imaginary friend wondered if it could have been like a beaker or, a, you know, or a, um, a needle or, you know, some, I don't know what it could have been, but yeah, um, it definitely starts off with, Louis being older already and not and a lot of these other books started, you know, telling a little bit about the childhood of the character. Um, and even in the notes back here, um, it really didn't, uh, it talks about, um, you know, the, uh, the adult life uh, of this, of this man. Um, it didn't really even say, it doesn't really say anything really about his childhood or his earlier years. So just an interesting, um, interesting nugget. Um, it also, Interestingly, when you um, look at the Value Tales series, kind of maybe a clue for this is that it gives the rundown of all of the value stories. And the first one on the list is the value of believing in yourself, the story of Louis Pasteur. So maybe this actually was the first book in the series that um, the and, and that the theme with the imaginary friend maybe hadn't been... Um, uh, pursued yet, um, but because it's clearly in a lot of the other books, um, I mean, that we've read so far, maybe maybe every single one of them, honestly. I'm trying to remember um, if we've done the Helen Keller one on YouTube or not. Um, that's the second one on the list. And I, I don't, I, I do think that that one had the imaginary friend in it. So, um, okay, yeah. So, uh, um, so anyway, that's tonight's story. Uh, thanks for tuning in guys and, uh, good night.